at a diamond bag. But we're not here, we're not, this is not a sprint. This is a long distance race. So whatever we do, we're trying to make sure it's sustainable into the future. So it wasn't about quick profits, it was about putting something there that would, that, that, that would last. So, that, so whatever we did, we're looking at, about, we're, we're, we're trying to ensure that it will be there for our customers and it will, it will be sustainable. And I think the second one was and I, it's about contentment and I think not being too greedy. I mean, like, if it's, if it's uh, regardless of what situation you're in, you should be comfortable. I, I think being comfortable and being content is a good platform for you to now take the next step. Now, when you're missing steps of the ladder, then you become, that's where those skills and the experience you might miss out that might actually help you, help you in the future. So I, mean, I think those two, and, and I'll just tell you one little story. Okay. And I remember when I was in financial control and he was, there was a time when we were actually worked together in the same office. I was in financial control and he was the CEO of the company. And I, yes, and, <laughs> and so I rushed up to his office complaining about, and I just walked in and I'm complaining about these people, these processes, these things. And he says to me, you know, he sits down, very calm, which lets me Fair. vent. And he says, Uzama, everybody, everything you've told me now, I already know. I want people, if the only way you can help me is to call me and tell me what the problems are and offer a solution. So, so and I, I think that was a learning point that I used. I remember when I was CEO, I would tell the stories. In fact, I tell, I used to tell most of, most of the stories to people. And so, and, and they were germane. They are, they are common sense, but practical and, and can be used in business. So being solution oriented is something that he really passed on. To. Yes. I mean, that's but, but that's that's uh, that's how Diamond Bank started. Solution, looking for a solution for. I mean, if you where the opportunity is, is providing solutions for for a segment that that's missing missing something. The people will be surprised because we kept talking about. How, I mean, we were growing. I would say that we were the leading retail bank, um, driving financial inclusion and using innovation and technology to to create customer experience. And so. People ask, so if you're, if you're making these statements, why are you now merging with another bank? Is the bank distressed? Is there a problem? And I like to take people back to what our ethos was. We're trying to go beyond banking. We're trying to create a platform so that our customers can access markets. And when you look, think about it, Diamond Bank and Access Bank merger, what are we trying to do? We're trying to create, create access. Uh, forgive the pun. We're, we're actually trying to create access. <laughs> we also give them access to global markets so, and outside Nigeria. Access Bank has done well in creating, or should I say, uh, setting up footprint in area, following, following the trade routes, area, whether it's London, whether it's in, in Asia or, or, or Dubai. And if you take me for as an in, in the individual, now I can actually open an account in the UK without any problems of KYC because my bank knows me now. And a lot of Nigerians have that challenge. I can now import stuff from different parts of the world as a trader in China because we, we, we now have a, a footprint in those locations. So that is what now enhances the value. Like tech is an enabler for everything. So personally, tech helps me keep things very simple connect with people. So if, when, I was in, when I was at CEO of Diamond Bank, the ability to talk to anybody in the organization or be able to be reached meant that empowered me. So instead of relying on people, I, should, I could actually connect and vice versa, people could connect. So that opened up policy, which you require for creativity and innovation. Technology enables you to do that. Why is technology important, especially in Nigeria? With only 10, 20% penetration, like penetration, there's no other way you're going to include people without technology. So without technology, there's no inclusion. There's no inclusion from health, uh, social, any social benefits or the financial benefits. So it's very, very paramount. Diamond Bank was over 25 years old. It took us 20 years to acquire 4 million customers with 300 locations. And the next five years, it took us, we tripled that just using technology, nobody came into Diamond Bank, they opened their accounts by themselves, or we went, we, 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 we took banking to, to, the, to the marketplace, and we created new job opportunities. People talk about technology, and that's the beauty about technology. People talk about technology taking jobs, but it 
create new opportunities, and create new jobs. We created new, a new, new type of banker that you would never have had. The biggest blockage, one is people, even internally. So you have to convince people to change and see where the future is. Especially, as I said, and going back to what I said about a long distance race, you have to see so people that it's a while, yes, we're going to take from our existing capital and we're going to deploy here because we now have to invest in the future. And the future is the other, the excluded. From what we saw about better and from a better to a better proposition, I think we we opened about five hundred we 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 opened about five hundred thousand accounts, people. And the average balances in those accounts were actually similar to those that we saw in the main uh, in our mainstream account. Just showing you that being financially excluded doesn't mean that you're poor. It just means that we had not provided an enabling ecosystem for them to be comfortable, for them to trust, for, the, for, it, for it to be convenient. And by our better position showed um, um, definitely, definitely showed that. The second is regulation. <laughs> yes. Regulation, now, the regulations have actually come a long way from their mindset about five years ago to recent years and realized that without social inclusion, there is no economic prosperity because you're going to have bottlenecks and you're going to have, you may be able, if you don't, if you don't include people, then you don't have the right numbers, then you can't allocate resources, resources appropriately. But then again, you're also, the problem there too, and the problem with the regulator is that you're using the mindset is different. The mindset of most bankers are one of a commercial banking orientation. But that's how we all started. We all started a commercial banker and now retail, we're now imbibing retail. But we still think commercial, in, in, commercially. And so do other stakeholders in this, in, in, in this whole market. So you need, you need a new breed of people, new, a paradigm shift, a big paradigm shift from leadership. to see that you, know, you, have to take, you have to take this risk. And this risk, I mean, and the risk is not as risky as it seems. If you consider that the banking industry on its own, lend, we are lending like it's highly concentrated in terms of the exposures. Less than 500 businesses account for over 80 percent of, of 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 the exposures, which is quite highly concentrated. So we need to diversify as a as, and build that capacity to di to, to 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 diversify. So that, that that's where I see. A lot of a lot, a, a lot of bottlenecks because when you think about it, the people that have actually adopted technology and the changing how they do things are the people at the at the bottom of the pyramid. So that's why I say you no know, technology is definitely going to be an enabler in driving financial inclusion because there's no alternative. It so when we when I look at what, what we do the better, what we were doing was just displacing one financial institution with another one. One that provided certainty, one that provided more trust for them, and one that provided an ability to save and transform, transform their life versus what they, were, what they were doing before. And that's where the opportunities are for these people, and they embrace it.